slideshow rather than uh, just a discussion. But uh, we can get started. There's supposed to be one other guy here, Terrence O'Connell. Terrence, Terry isn't here. So let's see. So publishing your manuscript is an ebook. It uh, requires a great deal of dedication, and it's uh, it's quite a difference between formatting a print book and an ebook. If you're accustomed to printing all your material, you may be surprised at uh, the differences between uh, a print and an ebook. Let me see somebody else just check in here. Well, so. To get an ebook published the correct way, you have to publish it according to the EPUB 3 standard. There's actually a stand, international standards organization that develops these standards. And its objective is to make it easier for an ebook to on the reader of uh, tablets and phones. Uh, it, it really is an interest in reducing the author's work. And it makes it very difficult for an author. It's not fun some of these uh, EPUB 3 standards. The EPUB 3 standard is long and it's complicated and it's almost unreadable. It covers a lot of ground, including the uh, how, to, how to add graphics, audio clips, and video tracks into, a, into an ebook. Now, one of the things you gotta do here is convert the manuscript, and that could be a lot of work. The uh, ebook, Three standard is used by all ebook distributors such as Smashwords and Kindle, or not Kindle, uh, Barnes and Noble. Kindle doesn't use it, which makes it very easy to get published on Kindle because they don't have any quality control at all. <coughs> and when you're using a word processor, it assumes the word processor that you will print whatever you write into it. So all the default settings are set up to simplify print editions, not ebook editions. There's two real areas that you got to work on in converting the manuscript. One is book design, and the other is formatting. Book design includes what kind of font family you're going to use for the book, what font size for the chapter headings and for the text. Uh, you have to put in a table of contents, <clears throat> and the table of contents must be hyperlinked. You can't have any page breaks. You can't have any headers or footers. And there are no page numbers on the, in the, in the ebook. Formatting is quite involved. Uh, fortunately, there is a good how-to book available. It's this. It's from Smashwords. It's a style guide written by Mark Coker, who is the owner and the founder of uh, Smashwords. This is golden. If you can publish this kind of this style guide, your ebook will be golden. This is a free download. And you download it, one thing you're gonna remember see right away is that this book is huge. It's 200 pages or more. And most of it, two thirds of it, is dedicated to fixing Microsoft Word problems. Once I get the ebook up into Smashwords, you know, get it, get it through Smashwords, then I upload it into Kindle. This is where you get the uh, Smashwords book <coughs> downloaded free here. I'll leave that up for a while. Let's see what happens here. Terry, hello. Can't hear you, Terry. You got your mic turned on? How about now? Now I can, now I can hear you good. Still not sure what happened to Karen. She was here originally, but she... Are you telling me I bumped Karen off? No, she, no, she, got, she dropped off before you got here. This is, uh, we're using Zoom instead of Hangout this time, and it's, it's much simpler, uh, but it's got a 40 minute limit. Oh, wait a minute, Karen's just text us, chat room. She's here. I see it. We just can't see her. Can see and hear you, okay. Well, let's go back to, to this. This is where you get the free download of the Smashwords book. Um, hyperlinking the table of contents isn't all that hard, but it is tedious, especially if you have a 
book with a lot of chapters in it. What you have to do is go through the book page by page and bookmark each chapter heading. And then for each item in the table of contents, you hyperlink it to the appropriate bookmark. So for instance, you go back to the table of contents, you uh, highlight chapter one, and you build a link to that to the appropriate bookmark for chapter one. Then you hyperlink chapter two to the appropriate bookmark for chapter two, and it goes on and on. And I usually Karen, screw it up because I get tedious, I get bored, and I screw it up. I'm sorry, someone say something there? Uh, Karen popped up, so I was just saying hi. Oh. Let's see. Yeah, there she is. Hello, Karen. Um, Anybody have any questions so far on this stuff? If you if you're only if you're only used to printing print material, this is this is quite shocking. What you got to do to get an ebook published in the right way? No questions. Awesome. Uh, uh, no, no, Karen, Karen is asking if you can provide a link to the guide you mentioned. Yes. There it is. I can send you these slides later on. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see a link anywhere. You said here it is. It's on the slide. Mm -hmm. the can you see slide. the slide? I don't see any slides. I don't see slides either, Hank. No? You don't see slides? Oh, oh wait a minute. I know what I did wrong. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Time out. I didn't say screen share. <laughs> ah. Now, can you see the slide? <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. There's always something I screw up on these things. There's too much to do. <laughs> I'm saying hello to everybody, and I forgot to put the uh, share screen on. <laughs> All right, let's push forward, see if we can make any progress on this thing. <laughs> so uh, we did the table of contents. Now, centering and indents. Why didn't this change now? Time out. Now we got another problem. I have no problems. I just got out of doing the kitchen by coming to this <laughs> E class. <laughs> You're taking advantage of this, huh? All right. Let me oh, see. as much as possible. Yeah. All right. Formatting an ebook. I'm going to have to do it this way. I can't use my uh, remote. Step one is you got to turn on invisibles or non printing characters. Does everybody know what invisibles are? No. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, well, no. Yeah. If you're used to print books, then you don't, you, you don't, you don't use this. Uh, invisibles and non-printing characters are stuff that are they're formatting that the word processor used, but it doesn't normally show them to you unless you turn on the invisibles and the non-printing characters. Mm -hmm. uh, the way you get this is to go to a, a Word and probably a Open Office. You go to View and turn on invisibles. It's a command. Mm. And once you do that, what you'll see is stuff like this. The blue mm. dots, the blue dots are every time someone hits the space bar. This backwards P is the return key or the enter key. And the dots, the, the rather the arrow is the tab key. And most people, if you're only using print material center the stuff by using the space bar or the tab key and they indent the first line of text by using the space bar or the uh, mm -hmm. tab key and this works fine for print books printed there's no problem at all for an ebook this is instant rejection this is death to the ebook <laughs> because for ebooks and the epub3 standards what you got to do is for centering you have to use the center command and to indent, you have to use the indent command. Now let's go through that for a minute. This is the center command. This is on your word processor someplace. It's usually set th up this. This is left justified, which means everything gets justified on the left side. 
this is the center command here. So if you highlight the chapter heading and click on this icon here, it will be centered in the middle of the page. The, uh, the indents for the first paragraph, this is what you gotta do if you're gonna change stuff is highlight all, you know, select all, then go into this paragraph, a format paragraph this command is, and put up the first line, how much you want it indented. This is variable, you can make it 24, you can make it 50, whatever you want, but you have to- I, 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 Let me ask you a question, I apologize yeah. if I came in late. Yeah. Um, what platform are you on that we're doing this? Doing the well, is this a, a word? Is this for a word document? Is this, uh, you know, it, it's a word an Apple document. This is yeah. This is Word. All right. So it you're not on any special platform. This is how you're going to do it in Word for the submission. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just that you got to do this with just about any word processor. But very critical here is you got to have the spacing above and below this paragraph has got to be zero and this line spacing has got to be single the default mm -hmm. you go into this you're going to see the default there is going to be stuff in here and the line spacing is not going to be single word automatically assumes that you want uh line spacing to be like 1.2 lines and they want spacing above and below the paragraphs and that screws up the ebook so you got to make sure that all of this stuff is zero and this is single More formatting for an ebook. Can't have more than four carriage returns in a row. Four is the maximum allowed. And no page breaks, since ebooks don't have pages. And if you're getting problems with all of this stuff, and uh, you know, if you're having, if you don't want to do it yourself, here is another uh, smash words link. This has a list of all sorts of people who will, for a slight fee, format your book. They don't work for Smashwords. These are authors who have published books on Smashwords and know how to do this stuff and they're willing to help out other authors. They may charge $25 or $35 to do this for you, but you know, it's, it's not free, but this is an alternative way to get all of this stuff done. And let me go, let me go back here. Once you eliminate all of these dots and the, the tab keys here, you know, then indent by, uh, you know, the indent command, you have to go back and get rid of all of these dots and, and arrows throughout the whole book. If that's the way you set it up, you know, like if you're formatting the you manuscript. Right. Um, I, one thing I don't understand, you said all of those dots are every time you hit the space bar. Yes. How do you get rid of something? Well, just, just that these you, here. you need. No, just these here, the indents. These, these okay, lines. but not the ones in between the words. No, 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 not those. And this tab key, just the, the first line indents. Got it. Okay. Yeah. You got to eliminate all of these so that the indent command is taken over. Oh. Did someone just sigh? Can you guys see me? Because I don't have a yeah. picture up there. Yes, we can see you. Okay. Yeah. And can you hear me now by any chance? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me see now. There's also a nuclear option. All else fails. And you can't figure out how to get rid of the formatting problems. What you can do is export the word processor file as a text file. This eliminates every shred of formatting in the, in the manuscript. Then you build a word processor template, which has you know the indent commands and, and whatever size font you want. And then you copy that text file and paste it into the template file. And then you have it, it's, it's pretty good, but you gotta adjust the formatting. You gotta go back and change the size of the chapter headings and you have to add any italics or special formatting you want like bold or underline. So I know I went through this real fast, but this is essentially what uh, you're faced with if you want to take a, uh, a manuscript and convert it to an ebook that will look good on a, you know, on a, a tablet.
Hank, do you have a preference in terms of uh, building it in the word processor file versus in a .txt file? Well, I write all my stuff in Scrivener. Uh -huh. And then I export that to a doc file. And mm -hmm. I open and that I open in pages. And then when I get to, I get the, then I, I do some, I got to do some minimum formatting in there. And then I export it as an EPUB document. It was one of the big advantages of, uh, of pages. And I upload mm -hmm. that to, to Smashwords. It usually works. I usually, I, I'll, I'll probably get rejected at least once. There'll be something that I screwed up mm -hmm. and I have to fix, but I usually get it through Smashwords, get accepted on the first or second try. Once I get it accepted in Smashwords, then I also upload it to Kindle. You don't have to go through all I have a stuff. question. Yeah. Hank. Yeah. Um, Scrivener has a lot of settings that I played with when I was formatting my book for both, both print and ebook. Uh, I wonder if you could do a session on Scrivener settings. That would be nice. The what settings? Scrivener. Scrivener has great settings for exporting into EPUB and uh, the, the PDF as well. I just, uh, I just tell it to export it or compile a book and export it. I don't worry about it. You know, there's a lot of stuff in there that I don't bother with. I just take okay. the, uh, I just take the doc file, which is one of the, the okay. little export files options. And I open it in pages, the Mac word processor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pages is good. They've actually updated the re the recent update to pages. Uh, they gave us gutter margins back, so I was yeah. so happy. Yes, <laughs> it's easy to, it's a relatively easy to build a talk file, the table of contents, hyperlinking, and it exports the EPUB. And Smashwords loves the EPUB uploads. They're much more easy to get, uh, to adjust than the, uh, the doc files. Smashwords, you can only do an EPUB or a doc file. And a doc file always gets messed up somehow. So, what do you want me to go over? This stuff. Um, question. I have a question for you. So, you know how a traditional um, hard copy book has various blank pages at the front and the back, as well yeah. as some mm -hmm. sort of art on the yeah. front and the back. Do you have to deal with that in any in any book? Uh, you can't have the blank pages. No blank pages, and do you? Do you usually have some sort of cover and back art? Uh, yeah, uh, there's no back cover. There's just the front cover. Okay. But you can put, you know, whatever is normally on a back cover in the, in a print book. You just take that and put it on the first print page and uh, you know the first page of the book behind the cover. Mm -hmm. You know, like I put, okay. you know, I put the book blurb and uh, some reviews and stuff like that as the as the first mm -hmm. page in the uh, in the ebook. Terry, any questions? Nope. Uh, how how do we get the files or the uh, uh, your pages? How do I what? Um, all these slides. How do how do we get a copy of them? I'll send them to you. The PDF copy with my notes. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, we get finished. And uh, yeah, Karen. Just uh, an aside to your question. Mm -hmm. I'm part of a writing group that meets every Wednesday, and I found that a good third to a half of them are also, you know, amateur artists, and they all do each other's cover work. Oh. And some of it is kind of simplistic, but all of it is rather well done. Mm -hmm. And in talking to them, they said almost any writing group whether it's online or in person, you're going to find people who want to draw and will do so either for free or a minimal amount of money. Oh, okay. That's good to know. I, that makes sense, but I hadn't, I hadn't really thought about that. Um, um, I was told, and Hank, you can uh, correct me. I was told you have a 50% better chance of somebody p buying your book if you've got cover art. Hmm. Yes. And, I, I got no. something, a statistic that says about 25% of the people who buy a book are first attracted to it by the cover. 
That's either twenty five or, or in uh, you know even online Amazon. You know, you're scrolling through all of these books. You see a cover, it strikes you. You know, and you suddenly you know it jumps out at you, and you click on it. It's the cover that made mm -hmm. you. Click on it. It's not the description. Now that's it's about twenty five percent of the people who buy a book are see, first attracted uh, to the cover. When I, I was doing NaNoWriMo, Kindle are the people who said, you know, urge you to supply cover art if you're going to use their service. And they're the ones who said there's a 50% better chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess Kindle is Amazon, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, imag imagine Amazon speaking out of both sides of their mouth. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kindle has services. Kindle has a couple services. So does Amazon, you know, creates um, so if you're asking us, say, oh, getting the cover is a good idea, they're gonna shoot, they're gonna, you're gonna get a pop-up that says, go here for a cover. Mm. And they'll charge you for it. So they wanna sell the covers as well, as well as the book. They'll probably also format the book for you for a price too. Patrick, any questions? Well, no, I'm good, Hank. Thank you. Um, anybody who is, is thinking of going this route, um, I'll give you a, a, a tidbit. Every year after NaNoWriMo, Kindle makes a special offer to those that completed NaNoWriMo on publishing services, both in upfront fees and um, I guess it's an uptick on you know, your royalties uh, as part of you know, participation in NaNoWriMo. Hmm. Um, I talked to one lady who says she writes all year and she just pumps it all into NaNoWriMo at the end just to get that offer. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Which is kind of sleazy, but I also understand <laughs> why she would do that. Yeah. I don't either, yeah. I'll keep that in mind. There's probably got, got to be something in there, knowing that it's Kindle, it's something that says you can't put the book anyplace except on Kindle. Oh, yeah. no, it's when you sign up, I think they – what was it, like a $2,500 upfront uh, fee is paid to you and they tell you, you know, how long they have to have the copyright for and mm. what your royalties are. Uh, you know, they, they do the whole thing and they do offer some services. I, I forget what. What's the $2,500? That, that's what they charge? No, that's what they're paying you. They, they, if, if you make the cut, they'll actually give you an upfront fee. Oh, well, I know. Uh, that's a contest. Fee. They'll give you an upfront amount of advance or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's a, and, that's uh, a contest you know. they run. Yeah. They run, you can submit your book, and if it's selected, you get money. But uh, it's, it's a lot of people submit and a lot of, very few of them. Uh, see, actually, they, again, I could be wrong, but I, the way it came out, um, it was through the NaNoWriMo, and it was all four NaNoWriMo completers. And I did post it last uh, November uh, or December on, you know, on the Writers of the Weird website. So if you go back, you may be able to see exactly what they were offering. Okay. okay. I'll check that out. Yeah. Sorry, and Terry, I'm so hazy on the details. Well, Terry, yeah. that woman you mentioned who, who writes all year and then, you know, grabs that opportunity, um, does she end up being one of those who gets chosen? Um, again, uh, I went through all this without having completed a short story, a novel, or having made a submission. So oh. I didn't ask a whole lot of questions. Oh. <laughs> I just sat there going, oh, good, good. <laughs> I was afraid somebody, of somebody asking me, hey, what have you done? And oh, I would no. get to say, uh, nothing. <laughs> so I just took a lot of notes at these meetings and just quietly pretended I was an actual writer. Yes, understood. <laughs> All right, now I can say I should have one short story published and I've gotten a handful of rejections. I feel Very like good. a real writer now with that yeah. handful of rejections. Rejections are part of the deal. Yes, Hank and I were emailing about that. Um, yeah, I have to remember that, that, that is a big, that's a big part of the deal, the rejections. And I've only gotten one form rejection, and I've gotten four where they gave me 
all sorts of great advice I just didn't understand. Yeah. Really? You mean they yeah. said it's not quite right, but here's what not we Not quite right, exactly. Yeah. But, and yeah. I actually, um, what was it? Uh, oh, somebody just sold something to the website who rejected me. And they came back and said, it, it's a very nice story, but we need more of a sense of awe. More you know, of a sense of awe? Awe and wonderment from your character. Ah, oh, geez, how do you implement that? So I, I, tried to imp I tried to implement it, and um, it was some out west uh, you know, contest, and I submitted it, and they sent it back saying, you know, this is a very nice story, but why is this preoccupation with the words awe and wonderment? And I was like, <laughs> shoot me now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm in another right group, and the woman there that says that comes to a lot of the meetings says that she and about five other women have a, an annual contest as you can rack up the most rejections in a year. Women gets a bottle of wine. Well, I, I, I'm, on, I'm on my seventh rejection. Uh, amateur. They're, <laughs> <laughs> they're about to send some more out, so I'm pretty sure by our next meeting I'll have at least right, eight yeah. or nine. Yeah, come back when you hit double digits. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I feel much better about the rejections I've gotten recently. <laughs> As my wife says, that which does not break you only makes her laugh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of sympathy coming from that quarter for me. No. <laughs> So this meeting is going to end in 10 minutes. I just got a, a blurb. All right. Well, uh, send me uh, the slides. I'd love yeah. to look at them. Yeah, we got a, it should be a time clock, a countdown clock on the upper left. Ah, yes, uh, yes. The yeah. You want to know something? This is just, I don't know if everybody's talking from the same devices from the previous meetings, but Karen, yeah. you are clear as a bell. Yay. And I love the artwork behind you. Oh, thank you. Hank, you are clear as a bell as well. The only one's a little fuzzy is uh, Lakshit. Uh, you are less than clear on my screen. And Lakshit's um, mic is off. I see the, the mic icon yeah. with a red thingy through it. That's right. And, yeah. So is my. Oh, that's body. what that means. Body. Okay. Yeah. But I can't believe how clear everything is this time. Yeah. <gasps> Hank, it's with you, it may not be that big of a plus, but we can see you clearly. Yeah. Do you think it's Zoom? Uh, uh, if you haven't changed anything, it should be. Yeah. What's, what's not clear? I'm sorry. No, I was joking. Oh, no. Everything's clear this time. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, so it's the advantage of using Zoom. And now, Madhavi Gari is... You're back with a, a microphone. What'd you yeah, do? Yeah, I just unmuted my microphone because there's a lot of noise going on in the background in my house. So I was like, I didn't want to disturb everybody while the presentation was going on. Yeah. I agree with you, Lakshad. I think this is much, Zoom, I think, is much better than uh, YouTube and Hangout. Um, it definitely is easier to use. YouTube mm -hmm. is really awkward and user unfriendly. Mm hmm. Yeah, actually, it says the Hangout refuses to work on his machines. Oh, oh. I'm I'm gonna have a test on this in a couple of weeks. I'm gonna be talking to a friend of mine, an author of mine. It's uh, we we set up a meeting. We're gonna be talking to him, and he's in Dublin, Ireland. Oh, so you're going to do an international test? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna interview him and record it for another right group. But he's oh, there you been, go. He's got a big hit. He's got he's got two books out: YA horror that are huge hits in Europe hmm. and just starting to come into this country. So I, I contacted him. I know him hmm. for about 15 years and he agreed. Yeah, let's do an interview. You know, give him the, give him the recording. He can use it with his publisher or website oh, or whatever nice. he wants. So what is his name? If I were to find his books, Tatter Ogilin. Adder. Tatter. P-A-D-A-R. It's Gaelic for uh, Peter. Oh, okay. And again, the last name. Look for the book to call. The Call. C-A-L-L. Okay. And The Invasion, I think is the second book. 
There's okay. two books in the series. Okay. I looked them up. They are astoundingly expensive ebooks. I think they're ten bucks. Oh. oh, that is expensive for an ebook. Yeah, got a hit while it's popular, though. You know, he's, he's won awards with it, so I guess that that boosts the price. Mm. Oh, sure. All righty, gang. Well, I'm going to sign off. It was good to All see right. everybody. Yeah, good Terry. Terry. Have a good Bye. one. Bye. Bye. Okay, we're going to put Patrick. it into this. Bye, okay. Madam. Bye. 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 Bye.